Grab your summer wine Let's talk about crime I am Tamara Welcome to Crime Me Corner Crime Me Corner Hi everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel I am Tamara and I love to talk about crime stories that took place right here in the Caribbean so if that's what you're into then go on right ahead subscribe and yeah hit that notification bell so you will not miss when I upload new videos with that out of the way and that being said I hope everybody is doing wonderful I hope that you're doing all right thank you for stopping by and I hope that you come back and you like what you see and you're interested in what I have to say and yeah so grab you something to drink grab you some wine i have mines as usual you don't have to drink wine though you can drink water you can drink some tea whatever floats your boat get some snacks and let's jump right into this crime story so it's very very crimey i am sure all the persons from st vincent and the grenadines know about this one it's the murder of glenn jackson yeah. now glenn ian jackson he was well known around the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He was first respected as a teacher and then he left his teaching career to join the broadcasting team at the country's national broadcasting station, NBC. And this is where Glenn Ian Jackson would gain his prominence in the radio career and trusting him into the limelight and political realm of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. No, nine and win them were the best um, and it grew in the same way that Clash the Bands grew from a discussion between myself and Cedric Mills and that's I think the way that things successful usually come about um, not anything where you sit down and plan out but of course you, you, you start you put plans in place after you've got the idea in the 1990s he began hosting the first ever radio talk show program called Shake Up. Now, if you remember Shake Up, if you've listened to Shake Up before, then drop me a comment down below. Say Shake Up down below if you've ever listened to Shake Up before. Right? And from this program, he gained thousands and thousands of listeners every morning. And this, this pushed Glenn Jackson into a position of influence because... He was so passionate and eloquent and charismatic on the radio. He then used this influence that he gained to rally hundreds of Vincentians and lead protests and organize rallies against organizations and companies for different causes. Additionally, he spent a lot of time on the radio and on the program criticizing and highlighting the current prime minister at the time, the leader of the New Democratic Party, short NDP. Um, he spent a lot of time criticizing the leader, the Honorable Sir James Mitchell, and he used this talk show and the influence that he had to assist the ULP, the Unity Labour Party, in gaining power in the 2001 general elections after the ulp won that general election with a whopping 12 out of 15 seats glenn was appointed the first press secretary and personal aide to the prime minister the honorable dr e gonzales and he was also considered one of his closest confidant and attended all cabinet meetings and weighing in on important political issues. It is from this point, Glenn was known for his passionate political rhetoric, supporting his leader and his party and ensuring that the opposing party, who oftentimes opposed, was ridiculed for disagreeing and speaking out against the ruling party. And oftentimes, this would lead to a back and forth, and I mean insults and words thrown between the Shaker program, and which was hosted by Glenn, and the New Democratic Party. They had their own program called the New Times Program, hosted by a man called E.G. Lynch. 
and Vincentians, hundreds of Vincentians will tune in every morning. It's either you're listening to the Shaker program or you're listening to the New Times program. It just depends on which political side you're supporting. And oftentimes there are Vincentian who would go back and forth listening to both parties because it was hilarious. Like it was pure entertainment especially around election time it would be just pure entertainment and it was hilarious especially both men going back and forth defending their party and throwing insults at the other party it was hilarious for most of it it would be heated between these two parties on the radio on their programs and it was during this time that glenn he led well he helped the ulp secured another win in 2005 continuing his role as the press secretary and personal aide to the Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. And the Tuesday before the election is Red Tuesday! Are you ready? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not labor thing, see? And now, let's go with the flags! Ready again! Ready again! Labor! Ready again! Ready again! Ready again! And now the horns! Ready again! Ready again! Ready again! However, just a few months after the 2005 general elections, Glenn's wife, Susan, had not seen him home on the evening of Sunday, March 5th, 2006. But on Monday, the 6th of March, around 2 p.m., the body of Glenn Ian Jackson was found by his son in the back seat of his vehicle outside of their home in Cane Garden. Reports claim that his body was found naked and that it was washed clean of any evidence. And autopsy revealed that he died as a result of a gunshot wound to the torso and his death was described as an assassination. So now news of his death, it sent shockwaves throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Again, this was a well-known man and he was also well-connected. So who wanted him dead and why? That was the million dollar question. As information came out, which was very vague and very little, persons began to formulate their own ideas as to what could happen, what could have happened to this man. And so, was it politically motivated? Was it someone from his own party? Was it someone from the opposing party? And did Glenn know too much? The fact that his body was found completely naked left many to wonder if it was sexually motivated i mean yeah you must wonder that but the autopsy did not reveal that so again person started to speculate no one had answers as to what happened to this well-known man in the country a very small country where almost everybody knows everybody and the prime minister at the time a very close friend to glenn he was away in malaysia and at the time of his death, he called into the radio program to speak on Glenn's death and how he felt about it. The government offered a reward of $100,000 to anyone that could give them information that would lead them to anything connected to the death of Glenn Jackson. I mean, a hundred thousand dollars. I would like to think that that's one of the, or if not the biggest reward that's ever been given to anyone or offered for any information leading to someone's murder or death or assassination. If you know any different or you know of any reward offered in St. Vincent that's bigger than that, let me know. You could correct me. But I think this is one, well, if not, I think this is the biggest reward that's been offered for any information leading to a murder in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But nevertheless, no one came forward with any information. And the next best thing 
was to now call in the big guys, the big guns, the professionals. You know who I'm talking about. You know once someone of prominence and influence and someone of that status is assassinated or murdered, you know the government would contact the next big thing. That's Scotland Yard. And you know, once Scotland Yard is involved, you know shit is serious. That's serious business. And so they call them to assist with the investigations. Few days after the death of Glenn, police invaded the home of 23-year-old Francis Williams, also known as Yellow, from Cyan Hill, and charged him with the murder of Glenn Jackson. He was remanded into custody until July 24th. On that day, July 24th, a large crowd gathered outside the serious offense court as persons, they were so curious as to find out who this man, who is this man who has been charged with committing such a brutal crime against such an uh, important, well-known man in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Like, who and why? Well, upon arriving in the courtyard at around 9 a.m., the courtyard was filled with chatter and persons, they were shocked and they were perplexed. 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 Persons, they were shocked and they were perplexed. They were perplexed. Yeah, I don't know why I put words in these things that I can't call. I mean, my tongue is so funny. So they were like surprised by his boyish slight stature, right? And someone even asked a question in the crowd like, that little boy could kill anybody? Persons were confused because he just did not look like he had the manpower and the mental capacity to commit such a crime. But at this point, Vincentians, they were using the facts of the case and they were making their own conclusions and one of which included the fact that Glenn's body was found at the back of the Jeep and it was cleaned of any evidence. That indicated to persons that the crime took place elsewhere and that he was not murdered in the Jeep nor at that location. Persons also used that information to conclude that this could there was no way that this could be a one-man job this had to be two or more persons committing the crime because it was such a flawless flawless crime that it's hard to believe that one man committed such a crime persons also question francis williams motive like why would he commit such a crime if he was the one who did it why what was his motive the prosecutors they claim that francis gave the police an oral confession detailing what took place between him and glenn that confession was thrown out and was deemed inadmissible after spending 21 months in prison on february 28 2008 Francis Williams walked away a free man and minute, minutes after prosecutors threw in the towel and discontinued the matter against him. Francis stated that he knew that one day he would walk away free. He also claimed that they would not be able to tell lies all the time and get away with it. Who they? I'm not sure. Maybe the government, maybe the prosecutors, the police or all of them combined. I don't know. So when I tell you that this case is one of the most controversial cases in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, I kid you not. Not too long after his death, news started circulating, bringing out another theory. And this time, it was alleged that Glenn possessed information that was crucial and detrimental to the ULP. He possessed secrets that no one outside of the party should be aware of and it was also said that he was an informant to the u.s ambassador in barbados was glenn a spy i mean 
you know you normally hear about spies in like russia usa and those countries but a spy in the caribbean i mean again these are just theories formulated by persons and the general public so i don't know in an online wikileaks article the cable number 554 Glenn was described by the U.S. Embassy as their most important contact. It would appear as though Glenn was an important asset to the Americans. Why would the Americans need information about St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Why would he be a spy? Again, just another theory. However, this one, this one was one of the main theories that circulated in the country because just a few days before his death while on the radio glenn claimed that come following monday he was going to drop bombs and release information that will blow the prime minister and the ulp party into shreds like i said he was a personal aide and a very close friend to the prime minister so did he possess information that would be detrimental to the prime minister and the party? Who knows? Maybe he did. Was he going to release that information on the radio come Monday? Who knows? Maybe he was. But he didn't get to do that. Because that said Monday, he was found dead in his Jeep, in the back of his Jeep. So now the question is, did someone kill him? Or was he assassinated to keep him quiet and to stop him from releasing important information that he possessed that will blow the shit out of the ULP and the Prime Minister? All of these theories circulate when someone mentions the death of Glenn Jackson. However, up to this day, there's, there's no one who has been held responsible for his death or there is no real information as to what happened to him the day he went missing and when he was found dead in the back of his jeep up to this day it's an unsolved case and information surrounding his death is very scanty and fishy on march the 15th 2006 glenn was laid to rest at the kingston methodist church it was attended by thousands of incensions and people flooded the streets. They could not hold inside the church, the amount of people that were there. And like I said, he was very loved and he was well known. And his funeral was not only attended by persons who supported Glenn's party and who tuned into the Shake Up program, but it also was attended by persons of the oppos opposing party and persons who were listeners of the new times program so in a sense his death it united the two parties for just a brief moment in 2022 just last year it was announced that the case was officially closed forever and with that we will never know what really happened to glenn and i've given you different theories i've given you different information and facts that floated around about his case there's too many theories going around all that could be true and not true but you're free to formulate your own theory and to pick the one that's more most logical to you and sounds just about right if you have one then let me know in the comment section below we could discuss it down there thank you for sticking around till the end thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.